A Rude Awakening is next. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's keep that momentum going. This is A Rude Awakening. I'm Sabrina Jacobs. We are still in Fun Drive. This is the last day, the last push for our fun drive. I've got an amazing, amazing conversation to play for you with Mr. Obi Kaufman coming up. But first, the news. I'm Eileen Alfandari with KPFA News Headlines. A crowd estimated at more than 2,000 gathered at San Jose City Hall to mourn and remember the Nine Valley Transportation Authority workers killed by a co-worker early Wednesday morning at a VTA rail yard. Amalgamated Transit Union President John Costa urged action to prevent a repeat of the mass shooting. We can't sweep this under the rug. We need to. Treat this as if it's a drug and alcohol EAP problem. We need to do the right thing now and move this in and talk about this and recognize this mental illness and workers' violence. We need today to move forward for changing this and to stop this. We can do better in it. Media reports say 57-year-old Samuel Cassidy was facing a disciplinary hearing on Wednesday when he arrived fully armed and that he targeted his victims, letting some co-workers live while he hunted for others and killed them. He had long complained he was being unfairly treated at work. Christina Honested has more. An anonymous source tells KPFA News Cassidy had filed grievances against as many as five colleagues. He was to have a meeting with them and a union representative the day of the shooting. But instead, he arrived to work carrying a large black duffel bag with three 9mm handguns and 32 high-capacity magazines, some with 12 rounds that are illegal. He told the union rep he had nothing against him, pulled out a 9mm and shot his colleagues dead. He then went on a manhunt after a superintendent killing others in his way. Survivors of the shooting say 36-year-old Tap Jadeep Singh was safe in an office when he left to save others from harm's way. Singh's family say as he was helping others, he encountered Cassidy who killed him. The Wall Street Journal is reporting customs agents stopped Cassidy in 2016 as he was returning from a trip to the Philippines. A memo from the Department of Homeland Security said he had books about terrorism, fear, and manifestos. But when the officials asked whether he had issues with people at work, he said no. I'm Christina Onestead reporting for KPFA. California Governor Gavin Newsom has joined the nationwide push to give people incentives to get vaccinated. Newsom announced the nation's largest such program, a total of more than $116 million in prizes. The first 2 million people to get vaccinated will receive $50 gift cards. We are setting aside incentive cards, $2 million incentive cards on a first come first serve basis for individuals that are eligible to get a vaccine that seek to get a vaccine that's effective today in the state of california if you're 12 years or over older you can uh, receive a 50 dollar incentive card so that is a hundred million dollar incentive program There's more. Virtually everyone who's already been vaccinated will be entered into drawings to be held on June 4th and the 11th. The state will give $50,000 prizes to a total of 30 state residents on those two days. On June 15th, California will hand out $1.5 million to 10 Californians. Undocumented immigrants are eligible. Incarcerated Californians are not. On June 15th, Newsom plans to fully reopen state businesses and largely drop masking rules. He said although about 63% of California residents 12 and older have received vaccines, the pace of those getting inoculated has dropped. He said getting to 70% and then an 80% vaccination rate will be much harder than the initial push for inoculations. 
California Senator Alex Padilla is among lawmakers leading an effort to urge the Biden administration to ensure vaccine resources and information reach Latino communities across the nation. In their letter, they say recent studies indicate Latino communities want to get vaccinated but remain hesitant due to misinformation around sick leave policies, cost and immigration status. Since the start of the pandemic, Latino communities have been disproportionately affected. Three Washington state police officers are due in court today to face charges in the restraint death of a black man who repeatedly told them he couldn't breathe. Two of the officers, who are both white, are being charged with second-degree murder after witnesses said they attacked Manuel Ellis. Another officer, who's Asian, is charged with manslaughter. Ellis's final words, I can't breathe, sir were captured by a home security camera. So was an officer's response, quote, shut the F up, man. Ellis died March 3rd of last year. Family attorney James Bible said the state charges set a precedent. The Washington State Attorney General's Office announced for the first time in this Attorney General's office, Office's history that they would actually be prosecuting law enforcement officers for murder. The murder of Manny Ellis, the first time it's ever happened. The officers tasers handcuffed and hogtied Ellis with his face covered by a spit hood. They reported the encounter began after they saw Ellis trying to get into occupied cars at a red light. Witnesses reported officers attacked Ellis without provocation. Senate Republicans are poised to block the creation of an independent bipartisan commission to investigate the Capitol insurrection by supporters of Donald Trump. A vote on the procedural motion to move forward to a full debate was bumped to today after delays on an unrelated bill. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is putting the heat on Republicans. He's asking them to support a filibuster as a personal favor to him. More from Mary Sherman. California Senator Alex Padilla made an impassioned plea in favor of a commission to study the breach of the U.S. Capitol. The Confederate flag, the symbol of violent white supremacy, flew inside this Capitol for the first time in our nation's history. Gladys Sicknick, the mother of Capitol Officer Brian Sicknick, who suffered a stroke and died a day after the attack, met with Republicans to urge them to vote in favor of the commission. I couldn't stay quiet anymore. Republicans were expected to filibuster the measure. If so, Democrats would need the votes of at least 10 GOP senators to pass it. In the House, 35 Republicans voted for the commission. For Pacifica Network and Public News Service. I'm Mary Sherman. Weather forecast for the San Francisco Bay Area. Mostly cloudy morning skies, partial afternoon clearing, a breezy afternoon. Highs in the upper 60s to mid 70s around the Bay, low 80s well inland. It'll heat up Sunday and Monday in Fresno in the central San Joaquin Valley. Sunny with highs in the low 90s. I'm Eileen Alfandari. More news on 94.1 at noon with headlines. Join us at 6 for the Pacifica Evening News. And we are back. We are back. This is a rude awakening. I'm Sabrina Jacobs. Guess what, folks? It's Friday. <laughs> it's Friday. It's uh, it's the eight o'clock hour, and uh, I am back with you again. And I've got my favorite guest, and I'm sure your favorite guest, back on the line. His name's Obi Kaufman. Yes, Obi Kaufman, the naturalist, the artist, extraordinaire. Obi. Thank you so much for being on A Rude Awakening once again. Hello, Sabrina. Hello, KPFA community. Thank you for having me again. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about the fires um, because we are officially in fire season, according to uh, Contra Costa County uh, Fire Chief Louis Burchard. And he was our guest for the last two weeks during this fun drive. And um, I wanted to, to, you know, it was all about fire preparation in the last couple of weeks, you know, um, but I wanted to, I wanted to lend that conversation to you discussing, you know, why, why we're where we are where we are, um, and we were t- when we were talking off mic. I thought it was very well. All of our conversations are interesting because it's you, it's Toby Kaufman. So, <laughs> but the, the 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 bottleneck that you were describing to me, um, the bottleneck that California sees itself in, and the West Coast sees itself in, um, in regards to 
being in a fire season and in these fire seasons starting sooner, how it relates to climate change. Um, let's go ahead and start a conversation with that, and then we can move it into um, the environmental justice side and how all of that is all tied into the uh, racial justice side. So we got two weighty, heavy <laughs> topics take it away totally related though i'm not yes. even sure if we can separate them really into two topics that's right yeah yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i mean totally related and and you know i mean we're talking and i appreciate the fire marshal's position we're talking about fire seasons and when you're talking about fire in california you're also talking about water whether or not it's in the atmosphere it's in the groundwater it's in the watersheds you know where where does the water come from where is the moisture content in the tree body itself the thing that actually burns finally at the end of the day right we're talking about water over a uh, decadal scale we're talking about uh, drought uh, we we're we you hear in the media that we're again in another drought Right. Uh, and you hear that we're in the wildfire season now earlier and earlier. What if, what if that's not really what is happening? So, you know, what if instead we entered a mega drought mm -hmm. 12 to 20 years ago? This is now a normalized paradigm that we're realizing going forward for the next several decades to come. Mm -hmm. It's always wildfire season in California, at least for the foreseeable future as we get through this bottleneck, this horrifying tipping point that we're at right now. Mm -hmm. So therein, therein is, is, is the nature of our terror and the nature of our hope. OK, because we un if we can understand that scale of things, if we can begin to sort of like. Yeah, let let um, we can let policy be policy, but on a popular level, uh, on a popular level between you and me, between all of us trying to figure out the language of how to be a citizenry from this place, mm -hmm. how do we talk about our interactions with the natural world and change fundamentally? And this is again a whole decadal process, something that's going to happen over. Years and years and years. Do we move from seeing the forest as just a forest? This is just one example. As just a forest of trees, but rather mm. as it is in this liminal state, the forests of California, as they exist nowhere else on the planet, the forests of California are indeed fire itself, hmm. held in stasis, ready to burn, oh. always ready. Trees themselves are fire waiting to burn okay mm -hmm. and then we can move from that you know philosophically we can move from that and we can begin to reject words like wildfire in general mm -hmm. wildfire is a word that i don't believe is it's mm -hmm. disingenuous it's not correct it's mm -hmm. these fires are not natural mm -hmm. they are not wildfires they are sourced fueled and perpetuated by faulty human, human understanding, ignorant policy, and greedy extractivist industry. Wow. The yeah, the biome that is, you know, serotonous, calif serotonous conifer ecology, if you will. You know, all mm -hmm. of those closed cone conifer trees that need fire to open to, in order to spread their seed across the forest, across California's montane regions, has been so badly distorted away from its pre-settler regimes mm -hmm. 200 years ago, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That the forest now cannot help but to collapse into massive conflagration. Right. And that's what we are going to see this year. We just know we're going to see it. Right. And, 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 for, uh, and it, would yeah. it be safe to say that, that that's uh, that's that's uh, predictive of what is to come? Um, when we were speaking off mic, I, you know, I would I had to take notes. And uh, <laughs> another another one of a, a, a let's see what I guess we can call it an Obi Coffee Coffin Kaufmanism and Obi Kaufman. Oh. 
or we can. Okay, continue. that's a term I haven't heard before. I like it. <laughs> well, it's, these are very poignant terms. Pyrodiversity mm-hmm. equals biodiversity. That's not, I thought. That yeah, was pyrodiversity powerful. equals biodiversity. Right. I don't think that I actually coined that. Uh, oh, I think that might okay. that sorry. might come from the fire historian. Mm -hmm. Stephen Pine in his book, Fire, A Brief History, published by Mm -hmm. Washington Press, which is a great book. Wonderful. You know, Sabrina, (laughs) books, books are so important now. Oh, my goodness. I mean, what a way. I mean, I I, I can't help but feel. Okay, so I'm an artist, right? I write massive books about sprawling books about nature in California. I wrote the California Field Atlas. I wrote the Forests of California. I wrote the State of Water. I've got a bunch of other books coming out. I need these giant books to to hold a bit of the nuance that I'm looking for because the truth of the natural world in California is extremely nuanced, as nuanced as the nature of hope itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yes. this is the, uh, so I'm always looking out to look in because mm-hmm. uh, I believe that this is this is the nature of real change, real systemic change, mm-hmm. um, uh, well, me, bo- me... both on a societal level and an individual level. So so I've got so I want to make this quick point about books though and sure. literacy. I'm so I'm so like scared for literacy in our in our society as mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. as a function of interacting, interfacing with knowledge itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, our minds are on fire. How about that? The wildfire, the forest is burning because we are burning. Wow. We, you know, we, 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 we have, we have this, we have like, you know, the truth that, I mean, what, how, how, how can I best express this? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if um, you know, hope is best when it's nuanced and nuance, which is necessarily born of and from this eloquence, eloquence as a rare commodity in the days of, you know, Twitter's 200 characters or Facebook's <laughs> sort of prescriptive doom scrolling, you know, like, <laughs> like this, like, <laughs> like you have, like, please, please uh, put out the fire in your mind by reading a book, like, enjoy, like, we, like, like enjoy some, some of the, some of these books, like Elizabeth Colbert's Under a White Sky, The Nature of the Future, that just came out, that's a beautiful book about, go. about fixing problems caused by fixing problems in the environment, Elizabeth Colbert, or Eric, Eric Holthouse's book, uh, the new book called The Future Earth, which is a, a new vision of a radical vision of what's possible in the age of warming. warming. These are scientific journalists who are, who are uh, frankly, much better um, writers than I am. So thank goodness I can paint. But these these are great books. Or, or Susan Samard's new book, Finding the Mother Tree, which is uh, a huge inspiration uh, to me, she is a uh, one of the world's foremost ecologists, and and this is about the complexity within the forest system. Mm-hmm. And her book is I'm hugely inspired from because in just two weeks, if I can, real quickly, Sabrina, mm-hmm. on uh, June seventh, I will be giving the keynote address at the 87th annual Western chapter of the International Society of Arboriculturalists. Uh, all the arborists are getting together as they have done for almost a hundred years now. And I'm giving the keynote address and the, and the address is entitled, The Mind of the Redwood Forest from Mycelia to Murales. So please tune into that and I will discuss uh, forest philosophy as it interfaces with forest ecology and forest policy moving forward because this is my mm-hmm. obsession <laughs> yeah 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 well, so thank you, know, you for this thank you for that letting me do that quick plug for my talk there we are not done mm-hmm. we've got a few more minutes left in this segment again folks speaking with ob kaufman author author of the forests of california and so many other pub publications go ahead and fill in the blank here obi naturalist amazing <laughs> artist watercolorist i just his books his books if we got any teachers out there we got any teachers out there you got an extra five bucks ten bucks go ahead and give us a call at 1-800-439-5732 go to hey kpfa uh, or kpfa.org and give securely um you can get the talk and get the talk that uh, obi did with uh, brian edward secret last year in September, um, and you're you, you, for a little bit more. 
you know, we'll give up uh, one, two, or three of those books by O.B. Kaufman. They are wonderful for the classroom. They are wonderful for the students. Um, they're so beautifully illustrated. It makes it simple and easy for your kids to understand what's going on in the natural world, especially what's going on here in California and uh, what we have to look forward to during this bottlenecked wildfire season. We've got about uh, a minute left, O.B. I just want to jump back into the pyrodiversity versus um, or excuse me, equals biodiversity. Pyrodiversity equals biodiversity. Um, you, you've said and you've spoken uh, in our many conversations off mic, plugging into the ancient tradition is a great opportunity <laughs> to understand what we're going through now and how to live in harmony with it, right? And basically you know, understanding that, that uh, the Native American populations, the indigenous populations around the world, you know, as well as here in, in, the, in the United States and here in California, you know, they have suffered through so much, but they've got it right and they understand. So understanding the, 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 the stewardship of knowledge, right? Um, understanding the language of ecological management. Now, I'm pulling all of these catchphrases from our conversations that we've had. Oh, that's um, right. That's right. Yeah. It, it, well, you can, you, I feel like they can all sort of funnel down to that, that core idea, that core what, word that I'm always doubling down on, which is justice. There you go. Uh, there are there are other words that ecologically minded people used to discuss such things. You know, most notably, like the word sustainability is used to describe some practices or mm -hmm. business related aspect of you know sort of adaptive capacity, and that is a good start. But it does not include the unifying cosmopolitan yearning that we have for harmony and for witness, for grace and for love. The word justice does that. You know, in the context of biodiversity, like you say, the world reveals a world really where where we let go of the scarcity myth, uh -huh. you know, that myth that sort of uh, spurs unregulate, unregulated capitalism in order to dismantle the working biosphere, really, uh -huh. and, and where we begin to see equity in diversity across all of its scales, right? In the world of inclusion and abundance, we are no longer being chased down this consumerist tunnel mm -hmm. of the linear economy. Instead, we are in a round basket mm -hmm. and we make ourselves within a world of replenishable resources, one, one where the intrinsic value overrides the rote utilitarian disposable worth of things, of living things. And so this directly channels, it directly feeds into emergent, the emergent reckoning of racial justice. I mean, when we so often talk about restoration in California's natural world, we fail to realize that mm -hmm. California's natural world is a landscape that for at least 10,000 years was intimately managed on all levels by these indigenous sovereignties that are still alive today you know restoring mm -hmm. california's habitat space means engaging the active native californian community and restoring those cultural traditions that they co-evolved with right. so uh you know there there can be no environmental justice without racial justice and in so many regards the inverse is true as well racial justice is environmental justice Wow. Environmental justice is racial justice. That was the voice of Obi Kaufman, naturalist, illustrator, author, award-winning author. And uh, yeah, I was, I was able to track him down and uh, have that conversation, part one of that conversation. We'll have the rest of it uh, in the latter part of this hour. Folks, this is Sabrina Jacobs. And this is A Rude Awakening. And guess who is with me right now? Kevin H. Hey, good morning, Sabrina. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I got all excited, started swinging my arms. Kevin's there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you get me up immediately. It's so it's it's so much fun to join you. So much fun to be here. I hope this never stops. I hope Pledge Drive never oh stops. My God. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, right. No, let's not keep it going. Uh, we, we all, we all got to work together and stop this thing. We got a long way to go. So it might continue, but we can hopefully not have that happen. Uh, Sabrina, Obi's some kind of genius, isn't he? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. I, to say the very, very, very least genius, yeah. yes, yeah. comes to mind. Wonderful. I his uh yeah, that interview with him or just any conversation with him. I mean, you could be talking about uh I don't know, vegan recipes and he's just gonna take you down the street around the corner on this trip that you find yourself wanting to never end. It's just he's he is just this amazing storyteller, um, presenter, and just the passion. The passion is undeniable. The passion is undeniable. And his first book, uh, the, the, the California Atlas, mm -hmm. um, it, it's it's it shows. It shows. It shows in his illustrations, the watercolors, the painting, the beauty of it. And then his next book, the for uh, the Cal Force of California, just yes. amazing. Same thing. The same Indeed. thing. Well, the and Force of California is 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 going to be a trilogy. You know, he's he's going to round that out with the coast of California and the deserts of California. So, That's and right. all of these books have a similar, not only a similar look and a similar readability, um, but mm -hmm. they all have this this extraordinary hand feel. You know, when you hold <laughs> these books, you want to keep holding these books, and that's something that's really special. You can't get it by reading on a tablet, you know, or on that's something right. like that. This is a real tactile sensation, and these books read like mm -hmm. you know, I. Uh, he, he mentioned the, the, he said the phrase looking out to look in during the interview. Mm -hmm. And it made me right. think of the Tao Te Ching as something mm -hmm. that you might hear in the Tao Te Ching. And his books Absolutely. remind me of the Tao Te Ching. You know, you can mm -hmm. pick these up and just flip to any yes. page and just that page can capture you and take you away. Absolutely. It can inform you and it can transport mm -hmm. you through uh, his science, through his writing. But then as you were saying, he's such a talented artist. The blending of his watercolors mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the subject matter, it's a, it's a match made, you know, in heaven on earth. And he really does it like nobody else does. So, um, uh, we have a couple of his books that are available as premiums uh, for a gift of $275. You can receive Forests of California. And this is a big book. This is over 600 pages, close to 650 yes. pages of extraordinary yes. work. Uh, we also have that with the uh, the waters, the, the state of water by him for a $100 gift at 1-800-439-5732 or we're creating a bundle. So we'll knock a few bucks off if you choose both of these because you do want all of his work. You know, once you have mm -hmm. one, it's kind of addictive. Uh, we'll get both of those <laughs> exactly. to you at 365. So call 1-800-439-5732 or visit kpfa.org and select these in the book area as your, as your thank you gift from us for donating. Uh, so you must have known Obi for a long while, Sabrina. It sounds like you two are very... I, and I, I would I would have to say probably about two or three lifetimes. <laughs> but I just <laughs> met him in September of last year. Oh, I just neat. met Obi Goff in September of last year. We have mm -hmm. not actually met in person, to be completely honest. But I feel like I've known him for thousands and thousands of years. I mean, the guy is just um, he's a uh, he, he knows how to plug in. You know, mm -hmm. he knows how to plug in and to connect. Yeah. And you're going to feel that in, in his books, through his books. You're going to feel that connection that he's making with every reader. And I want to go back to the tactile part, too. Um, yeah. Every book, it feels like it's been handmade. And it's just, a, it's a very intense feeling, you know, it's like, a, all right, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's get into this book. Let's read this book. And it's like, okay, okay, wait a minute. I'm feeling this book. I'm literally feeling every single page. Like it's, you know, it's been, you know, a, a you know, a custom made piece of parchment and it's just yeah. beautiful. It's just, it's just amazing. It's just the, the, the whole package is just amazing. Each book is its own package of knowledge and, and passion. 1-800-439-5732 1-800-439-5732 you can also give securely at kpfa.org um yeah this is i think the third time i've had obi on the on the show Great. and Great. um yeah yeah i can't wait to talk to him again every time we talk it's a different take on you know Whatever the subject matter is, of course, it's about the environment. Of course, it is about the climate emergency during this eight o'clock hour, right. and um, just having him put his his spin on what we're dealing with, yes. you know, because he sets it out in reality. This is this, that is that. We're dealing with right. this this anthrop anthropogenic cycle, um, and yes, California is going to burn, but you know, it's like okay, we're hearing about the fires, right? But he's also teaching us to change the language, 
you know, change our language, you know, change that, that negative language so that mm -hmm. we're able to not only accept, but be hopeful about the future. And you get all of that from the Forest of California, from the uh, book on water and what is that? The State of Water. I always get that name wrong. The State of Water, um, the original book, the California Field Atlas. And uh, yeah, you can go to Coyote and Thunder. You know, you can go to Coyote and Thunder dot com and or get you more information. To, or you can go to kpfa.org <laughs> and uh, with the secure and safe donation, yeah. yeah, you can get these sent directly to your home and you can check them out there at your great, Damn, at your great convenience and leisure. <laughs> well, we got to do this. I was being a little bit glib before when I'm saying I'd like this pledge drive to go on forever. And I could just hear our general manager. I could hear the smoke pouring out of his ears as soon as I said that because we don't want this to go on forever. And we do need your support because we're supposed to end today and we're like at $80,000 to go to get there. And we've been making up a lot of ground. We really have. Have. We've had some great <laughs> donations today and people really come through yes. for you, Sabrina. Yes. You know, we've got a donor in Richmond that says Sabrina's program, A Root Awakening, provides excellent coverage of many aspects of climate change. On and on and on. There's some love. Okay. You know, there was a thousand dollar gift in this hour mm -hmm. from Walnut Creek. So people are That's really coming right through. On. Our donors are really coming through today. We've already raised $7,000. We started nice. off the day with a $95,000 goal to try to wrap this pledge drive up and we're chipping nice. away at it, but we need everyone's help. So if you can, Absolutely. please go to 1-800-439-5732 over your phone or visit kpfa.org and make a pledge today because we really do need your help and we really do want to stop this drive. Yeah, we do. We don't We don't want to take it another week. Um, we don't want to take it another day. We don't want to take it through this weekend. We want to end it today at, uh, what is it, 7 o'clock, Kevin H.? Yeah, that that's that's okay. the hour. That's the hour on the yeah. clock. That's that's where that we're. That is the for. bewitching hour. That yeah. is what we're pushing for. Mm -hmm. Of course, 80, I want you to 8, give right 000. now. Eighty-eight thousand. <laughs> Eighty-eight thousand three hundred and thirty-one dollars to get there. <laughs> you are and watching there's... the clock, and you're ticking off the time. I am, as they and I can actually see there's no caller on the line, so there's plenty what? of room for you. I know. Let's oh get going, people. Oh we need you. Goodness. Donate now. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. 1-800-439-5732. KPFA.org. You can give securely online. Folks, please, 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 please. We got to get this going. We want to make this the last day. Um, we we want to get to that $450,000 goal. We need to hit that $450,000 goal. 1-800-439-5732 kpfa.org Again, that number 1-800-439-5732 Kevin H. Um, which, one of, <laughs> which one of these books is, is your favorite? It's kind of hard to, to uh to boil it down to just one of them because they're they're such amazing gifts. I think they're great for teachers um, mm -hmm. as well. You know, mm -hmm. if um, mm -hmm. the teacher can you know say hey recommend that you know maybe an environmental studies teacher or something, you know they're going to be able to take their students on a journey, sure. a, a very necessary journey, yes. a very idealistic journey on the environment of California and really give them an understanding of the landscape that we're living with, the landscape that we're dealing with right now yeah, right. as we go into this uh, fire season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Asking asking about your favorite Obi Coffin book is like, what's your favorite sunset? I mean, they're all beautiful, <laughs> right? and they're, they're, they're all one and the same. They really are. And the fact that yes. Forest of California is going to lead to coasts of California and the deserts of California, he's creating yes. and he's giving an entire ecosystem. And this is so unique. What we have in California, what, what it's mm -hmm. our obligation to protect and preserve. There's no place like this on Earth, like there's no radio station on Earth like KPFA. We've got to do this together, and we've got to do this now. And all of Obi's books really convey that message with passion and with talent. Like, don't see anywhere else. So uh, they're all the same. We know what's really uh, my favorite aspect about his books, though, is we talked about the production, and that's Heyday Press. Heyday, his publisher, is a Berkeley stalwart, yeah. uh, longtime supporter of KPFA. Uh, that's wow. really crucial. It's that relationship, too. You know, the book is the package. The object is art. It's, a, it's, it's the real deal. 
it's a beautiful package. So there is no favorite yeah. Obi Coffin book. They're all the favorite. I know. I know. Absolutely. Absolutely. 1-800-439-5732. And just to step into that that history of KPFA and, and what we've been able to do for what are we coming up on? 72 years now? We passed that. Years? Yeah. yeah we're what, going into what, the 73rd. What? We're going into the 73rd year, Kevin yeah, H. Yeah, yeah. Since 1949. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And you know what? We want to be here for another 73 years. 1-800-439-5732. It's you. It is you, dear listener, that make it possible, that makes it possible for us to be here giving you the truth, giving you the truth about what's happening in our world today. You know, we just had news headlines. I, I usually have news headlines uh, right before I jump into my show, A Brood Awakening. And, you know, it, it's not it's not the same as listening to CNN or MSNBC. It's just not. It's just not. Mm -hmm. Some folks want to say that that's not the truth. It's not. It's not. KPFA gives you information, integrity. It's, it's, it's so important to be able to hear the truth from your media outlets that you're depending on to find out what's going on in the world. You know what I'm saying? Seriously. And KPFA is the only place where you can truly get the truth. You know, you weren't getting it in the last four years with this racist in chief that we were all <laughs> dealing with, okay? Yeah, you were not getting awful. it from MSNBC. Yeah, no. You were not getting it from CNN. No. They were looking at the bottom line. They were looking at the numbers. That's sure. what these folks were doing. They didn't care. They've got they their, their multinational corporation, mega monster companies. They're paymasters. Exactly. Okay? That's who they have that to keep have happy. To to. They mm -hmm. have to answer to them, right? And you know what? You know what? Me, Sabrina Jacobs, Kevin H., and the rest of the gang here at KPFA, we have to answer to you. And you know what else? I truly feel like we have been. And we want to continue to do that. Absolutely, That's why we we're do. here. That's why we're doing it. And our listeners yeah. want us to continue. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm just giving that number out one more time. 1-800-439-5732. I've been doing it in my sleep. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our listeners want us to continue. I have a, I have a, a quote from a, a donor yeah. from yesterday that says, I vowed yes. to stop after my fifth additional donation this drive. But here I am again, a listener and monthly <laughs> supporter for 40 plus years. But he promised that after the next 40, that's it. <laughs> so let's keep oh, John. <laughs> let's keep John. Let's get let's let's put him to task. Let's keep yes. John around 40 more, 40 more years of, of support from John. You know, we need yes. that. Yeah, we need that yes. from everybody. And if everyone yeah. gives 10 or 20 bucks, we could keep this going. But if one person calls right now with a fifty thousand dollar donation, hey, we could wrap mm -hmm. this drive up by noon. So let's do it at yeah. any level. Call 1-800-439-5732 or visit kpfa.org. We'll be happy mm -hmm. to take it and we'll be happy to thank you. And you'll be happy to know that you're keeping the station going for everyone else. Absolutely. 1-800-439-5732. 1-800-439-5732. Five seven three two, please. We need you. We need you. We need you right now, because we got to keep the lights on. We've got to keep things moving. We've got to keep shows like this one on and accessible to you, the listener. One eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. This is the last day. We don't want to drag this out. We don't want to keep. Uh, doing this for another week or another two days or another three days. 1-800-439-5732. Kevin H., um, let's talk a little bit more about Obi's, uh, Obi's books, Obi Kaufman's books, the writer, illustrator, and then I think I got one more clip of our uh, conversation that I want to roll to, but um, yeah, yeah, it's riveting. hard to... Mm -hmm. 
it's a mm-hmm. great conversation. I'm 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 anxious to have you this as enchanting as it is to speak with you. I want to give back to that because I haven't heard it yet. You just recorded this last night with him, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. I was able to track him down. The guy is busy. He's constantly on the run, on the go, or he's shut down writing a book or two mm-hmm. or three. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. like it's like, hey, can you can you get me in there about uh, you know, can I get twenty minutes with you? Can I get thirty minutes with you? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I was able to catch him and uh, I tell you it's just every, like I said, like you've heard, like you have been able to hear, um, it, the conversations with him are just profound. To say that they're profound is is actually not enough. It's not profound mm-hmm. enough. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right, right. He just he really knows how to drill down on um, on what's happening with our world. I mean, this is his passion, and it shows. You know how some people say, "Oh, yes, you know, I I, I really like doing this, or I like doing that." This guy loves doing what he does. He loves illustrating. He loves, you know, telling the story. And, and he loves giving that story, giving that gift of knowledge to, to everyone that picks up his book. So mm-hmm. it's definitely worth it. Yeah. A $365 bundle, 1-800-439-5732 for Obie's books. Um, just an amazing guy. Just an Absolutely. amazing guy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. An amazing work. I, uh, and I'm coming from a bookseller's perspective. I don't know if you recall, I was a bookseller yes. for over 30 years before I joined KPFA's yes. ranks. And his are the kind of books that make book selling a pleasure. It's the mm-hmm. kind of book you can put in anyone's hand, regardless of their interest. They don't have to be a naturalist. They don't have to be, you know, interested in trees or interested in water. You know, they just have to love a quality book from any any level, any appreciation. Uh, it And his work provide that for you. So that was exactly the kind of book that I loved having in the store. And I loved being able to sell because it was so mm-hmm. easy. You just put that in someone's hand, and it takes care of itself. I don't have to put the hard sell on. I don't have to pitch. It, it pitches itself, you know? And that's a very special book. That's a very unique book that can come, so much can come across so quickly mm-hmm. uh, from the mm-hmm. tactile sensation just open to any page and you're hooked. You know, one page leads to the next, leads to the next. There really is nothing like uh, his work. So I really encourage folks to call 1-800-439-5732 or visit kpfa.org make a donation you know get the bundle because one leads to the next which will lead to the others and he's something special take advantage of that absolutely and you know if you can't give you know the 365 or if you only got a twenty dollars that you can give up that's that's totally fine too 1-800-439-5732 we've got some amazing amazing gifts that uh, we have put together the whole team has put together put together kevin h uh laura privis lucrecia burton we've got some amazing folks that have been yes. putting their blood sweat and tears blood yes. sweat and tears in to this drive to make it something that's a worth your while community. Um, you, the listener, you are the people, you are the ones that are making this station stay afloat, not only stay afloat, but thrive and give you quality programming, not only with this show, A Root Awakening with yours truly, but with these amazing archives. I mean, Angela Davis from, you know, what six years well, ago, all the way to right, mm-hmm. Sorry, <laughs> right. Yes. and then uh, and then Edward Said from thirty years ago, almost. You know, it, mm-hmm. telling the, the stories that are you know that were happening back then that are definitely uh, appreciate now, but also you know just giving knowledge about where our world is, where it's going, how history repeats itself. If anybody can tell you about that story, it's KPFA 1-800-439-5732. We got one more clip. We're almost coming to the end of our hour, but I want to play this uh, I want to Mr. Man of Steel Rod Akeel to roll this clip. Uh, it's about 7 minutes, 8 minutes, yeah. And um yeah, just finish up that conversation that I had with Obi last night. He is amazing. If we could go ahead. Thank you so much. Well, you know what? I want to uh, just direct you real quickly to uh, to a a um an op-ed uh, mm-hmm. that was uh, featured in Sierra Club. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of folks know that Sierra Club is a, you know, it's been known traditionally as a predominantly white environmental um, environmental justice organization. Um, with the advent of the, the the protests from last year um, and just the the 
the upheaval on the racial level. Um, in the last four years of Donald Trump, the uh, the, the stoking in, uh, of racial tensions by this racist in chief for four years, you know, it culminated into, you know, George Floyd, the George mm-hmm. Floyd protest, right? And it culminated into this reckoning, this reckoning by white America to not tiptoe over, you know, blatant racism, microaggression. Yeah. And how they view yeah. themselves, you know, oh, I voted for Obama. I'm not a racist. You know, it, it, it forced mm. that deep dive into who they are as people and who we are yeah. as a nation. So I want to just quote the uh, article from the Sierra Club, uh, sierraclub.org. Uh, fossil fuel companies such as Shell, Chevron, Valero and Marathon also fund police foundations. These foundations create a public private structure wherein the corporate elite can overtly support public police departments through direct donations sponsorships and special programs and by serving as directors on foundations boards the ongoing racial justice protests of the last year have emphasized that police exist to enforce a racist racist social order that protects corporations capital and buildings rather than black and brown lives police foundations are a key for orchestrating normalizing and celebrating the collaboration between corporate power and police and i it, it was I was floored. Mm. I was floored, number one, that I was reading it uh, at the Sierra Club. Uh, it's by Leslie Fields. It came out on May 26th. Um, and that they're using that type of language to describe what's going on right now and making the necessary correlation between policing, um, the funding of the police by mm-hmm. an incredibly salient companies. point. And absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So just to, just to keep talking about, uh, you know, what um what we're seeing now this change and i think that's the silver lining of a donald trump in office for four years i think that's the silver lining of folks having to be forced to see what has been happening the 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 outright murder of black people by the police right it's disgusting it's sick it was heartbreaking i cried i (laughs) cried and i cried and i (laughs) cried but yeah. It's been it's it, 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 the 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 death of black bodies has been a spectacle sport for yeah. hundreds of years. Yeah. Go ahead, Obi. Yeah, and, and and now we have now you know now we have some leadership on a national level. Um, yeah. and we're not talking about the Sierra Club, although they're a Washington-based non-governmental uh, organization that is 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 changing their identity quickly. I have a number of friends who are working on this staff of CR magazine uh, more 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 on the magazine than I than I have than I have acquaintances actually in the, in the organization itself I've got some real problems with that organization as, as over the decades they've really sort of become a hydra of different uh, of different uh, voices and identities that that mm. have largely been um, uh, dissonant to my in my es- estimation not necessarily disciplined at all mm. so uh, I, I, I think that now Sierra Club is, has has sort of uh, tempered their steel a little bit, and they are and they are focused in this new attitude, this new uh, 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 reckoning, uh, and leaning in. You know, and and I appreciate that, and and you know, I and I also applaud the uh, the presidential administration just to get even a little bit bigger. Apparently, our president is going to be addressing the nation in just a few days on the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa massacre, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, which uh, you know, it, it, I mean, could you could you have imagined a year ago? where we were and where we are, you know, uh, th- things are changing. Things are staying the same. It's much the same way as, as fire in our watersheds. Uh, things are getting better and they're getting worse at the same time. And letting two truths like that exist is very difficult in a polarized, uh, punditry oriented media right are you for or against we need to have a we need to have a we need to have a you know we need to have an argument well there's, there's that cognitive <laughs> so tired dissonance. of arguing yeah it's a cognitive yeah talk about cognitive yeah. that's right that's right like like policing as a structure mm. can be, you know it is necessary on one level 
And yet on another level needs to be systematically changed. Absolutely. Right. So it's good and it's bad at the same time. So defund the police is not a cry that necessarily means what it means. You know, <laughs> I think I think of this, you know, as all political slogans do uh, as they are reduced. It's the same as for Black Lives Matter. Right. It's, mm-hmm. you know, the obvious reaction to Black Lives Matter, which was so clearly uh, spawned from dissonance is that all lives matter. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's not... <laughs> so, well, and yet, of course they do, but all lives can't matter until Black lives lo- matter. It's like, you know, it, it, like it's, it's the nuance of the language. And so I love this idea of language. Just, mm. I can just like get back to books for a second. You know, I mean, both of, both of these forces from the top, right? So it has to come from the top and from the bottom, from the top to form policy, you know, for the people, by the people, a government that, and I would offer an omitted third part of that adage, for the people, by the people, to support the people, <laughs> and it has to come from the so-called bottom in the form of political will. And both of these four forces are best formulated and best given rise from those who professionally use the humanities to generate the new stories of our relationship to the science Mm-hmm. that is being harvested by so many of those empirical disciplines, shall we say. Mm-hmm. We need better language, always better language, to describe a non-commodified relationship to the natural world. At least that's my life's work. <laughs> and certain, you know, certain aspects of that relationship will be divorced from market capitalism that has presented us with what is potentially the worst failed state model in the history of humanity, which is the one that threatens the bones of the biosphere itself. And that's what we're looking at here, you know, and that, and that even understanding that I think is a very exciting prospect for Mm -hmm. revolution, for justice, for hope. Mm -hmm. As as long as it comes from love, if it, you know, to, to quote, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., you know, if it doesn't come from love, it's it's going to be something else. That's the yeah. That's the voice of Obi Kaufman, author. Um, man, Multi- that's just a yeah, multifaceted just a, dude. That's a that's powerful stuff all around. Artist. I mean, just that the, the, the passion just oozes through. It just, I just, it takes a hold of you. It takes a hold of you, and it is so prevalent, so obvious, so wonderful to behold in his books. Mm-hmm. And we are giving those books away. We are giving those books away. The state of water. <laughs> We're not giving them away necessarily. <laughs> we, we will thank you and we will send them to you for your generous donation at kpfa.org. But giving them away, I don't know. <laughs> and that's spoken by Kevin H., our development director. Not that's a development right. associate, but our development <laughs> Director, <laughs> not, a, not a development giving him away. Or <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm just going to talk myself out of a job. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I almost did it. But I'm like, let's let the pledge drives go forever. Yeah, I almost had one foot out the door right there already, too. Yeah, yeah I'm just <laughs> okay, we're both in trouble. Yep, yep. <laughs> Please, people, help us, help us stay, help us stay employed. One eight hundred four three nine five seven three two, or visit kpfa.org. They can That's save and secure right. donation right now. Please absolutely, keep absolutely. us keeping we're food on our table. We need it. Yeah, <laughs> we need your help. <laughs> 
obviously. We need I'll good <laughs> organic food, my kid. We got a caller on the line. Thank you, caller on the line. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. It's the third week delirium. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> Solid. Drive delirium. It's like, ah, one 5732 We're coming to the tail end of A Rude Awakening. I'm Sabrina Jacobs with Kevin H. During this springtime fun drive. And I just want to go through the list of folks who have been able to give. And I, because I recognize some of these names here. Mr. Harinder or Hari Lava, Dr. Hari Lava. This guy is amazing. I've actually had him on the show. And uh, yeah, I want to say thank you to you and hope to have him again in the very near future. He's another one extremely passionate and extremely knowledgeable of our climate emergency. So I always love to tap him for some information. So we'll definitely be speaking with him again, like I said, in the very near future. Ah, Robin, one of my fellow Pacifica board members, we won't go into that Pacifica board stuff, but (laughs) Robin was one of my colleagues. So I want to say thank you to him. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got bunch of anonymous folks. We appreciate you. One of them got the state of water, understanding California's most precious resource by our illustrious guest today, Obi Kaufman. Appreciate you. And they are saying KPFA is most valuable, is a most valuable resource. We are indeed so fortunate to be able to partake of the vast and intriguing programming. Okay, that's not me. That's anonymous in Aptos. I want to say thank you to Anonymous for that wonderful donation of $100. And we got another one. Somebody got a KPFA mask. Hey, they are stylish. Don't you think, Kevin H.? I think oh, oh, I do. Absolutely adorable. Thanks for all you do. I learn so much every time I tune in. And you know what? I do, too. Every time I put a show together, I'm learning something new, deep, profound, necessary, mm-hmm. And real one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two one eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. Thank you to Sonia. Thank you to Martha. Sonia said, "With a heart that is bigger than my purse, I wish I could afford to give more to all my nonprofits." And you know what, Sonia? I'm right there with you, sis. One eight hundred four three nine five seven three two. Martha, thank you. Thank you for everything you do. I couldn't imagine not having KPFA. You know what? I'm right there with you, sis. I'm right there with you too, Martha. That is so true. James, thank you so much, James. Listening at this time as a COVID commuter more than ever. Glad to add to your numbers. Yes, we appreciate you. Thank you, you, James. Yes, absolutely. East Bay History and Ricky Vincent's Funk Show are recent and current faves too. Ricky Vincent, we've got some amazing music shows too, along with the box of toys. There's also Ricky Vincent's funk show. He checked that out tonight what at a 10 a.m. Sl- what a sneaky secret <laughs> weapon that KPFA has. I think a lot of people think of us as news and commentary and, and events of the day. But we're majority we're majority music. Are you tuning over the really? weekends? Yeah, I think it's like 61% of programming is music. Uh, you would know, Mr. DeVille. I wouldn't know. I'm not the program guy. <laughs> These are the numbers <laughs> they the told me. Okay. I, can't, I yeah. can't know every number every time, but I think I'm right at this one. And and if somebody mm-hmm. knows different, please, you know, call 1-800-439-5732. Leave it, leave it in the comments. Uh, you know, Kevin, it's actually 63%. You know, uh, our listeners mm-hmm. are so on it. They they know every mm-hmm. everything. They're so passionate about KPFA, yes, what KPFA does and how you know and it's a participatory thing uh we really we're a membership driven listener sponsored radio station we're the mm-hmm. oldest listener sponsored radio station in the united states this is since 1949 we've been doing this mm-hmm. this way for over 72 years and it has to continue this way it's so unique and we can't do that without the support of our listeners and you just read a, a laundry list of wonderful comments uh you know yeah. they, they, they they touch the heart um they really they boost us up they put the wind under our wings and we can't thank you enough uh for the financial thank you, Drew. thank you gail thank you drew and thank you gail and thank you james yes 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 mm-hmm. it's magnificent mm-hmm. it really is magnificent <laughs> And, mm-hmm. and, you know, I, I was being a little bit glib earlier when I said I'd like these pledge drives to continue, but I really do enjoy them. I think it allows our host to put forth something special, some unique content. I love what Mitch has done with his United States history. Uh, every mm-hmm. day is an entirely new show. And you can select mm-hmm. his, you know, uh, uh, his curation of, of mm-hmm. the United States history in chronological order as a as a 
as a thank you gift uh, from, I, I think mm -hmm. the level is a $25 donation or more. Uh, and, and, and they're putting that together as we speak. You know, this is something that's an ongoing project that's going to be a one of a kind thing. And you'll get the audio, you know, from our audio archives of Mitch Jezerich's uh, chronological history of the United States from his shows. This is spectacular. This is something you're really not going to get from anyone else. Mm -hmm. And, and I really encourage people to take advantage of being a part of this, be a part of KPFA, be a member, you know, we're a membership organization and at a $25 mm -hmm. level, you have voting rights. You know, you, we have a, you know, bylaws referendum that's coming up. We don't want to get into any of that right now, but, <laughs> but this is something that when you pledge to KPFA, you are a part of the mix. Your voice that's is right. heard and we that's respond, right. you know, uh, we've been reading up your comments. We hear you. We listen. Uh, you're a part of this, too. So please call 1-800-439-5732. Be a part of this with us or visit kpfa.org. Yeah, Sabrina, it's like uh, we're, it feels like we're putting the fun back in fun drive. I can't. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it is a joy. And, and so I really do. I really relish this time with you. And I really I love getting that feedback and that direct communication with our donors. So uh, the more of that the merrier please keep it coming i love Absolutely. to hear what people think about our station well, we, and how we can work better with you absolutely well we got to close it out kevin uh 1-800-439-5732 this has been a rude awakening i'm sabrina jacobs with kevin h hopefully this is the last day of the fun drive folks it looks like it could be thank you so much to everyone for donating we got that last minute push of three hundred dollars from chris from uh i don't know if that's uh, if this is that our chris kevin h i don't know anyway so <laughs> <laughs> thank you so Rosa. much for everything. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's been an amazing fun drive. We Whoa. appreciate the love. KPFA, KPFB 89.3 FM in Berkeley, KFCF 88.1 FM in Fresno, K248BR 97.5 FM in Santa Cruz, and online at kpfa.org. Stay tuned for a rebroadcast of Democracy Now!